All right, so we're doing the journey today. Now we're doing something very similar to what we did um, on Wednesday with stopping by the woods. We're doing pack, we're doing theme house, but I wanna go over the journey together. It is a longer poem, but we'll go ahead and read it once together, then we'll go back and we'll paraphrase. Is everybody at the journey? So before we get started, there are some vocabulary words um, that might be unfamiliar to you. So for example, mel melancholy is in there. It's just a feeling of sadness, basically, sometimes without a cause or without an obvious cause. My world geo teacher called the Great Depression the big sad. The big sad? The big sad. Yeah. Oh, the big sad. Oh, that's, I've never heard that before. I like that. Big the sad. big sad. All right, the journey. One day you finally knew what you had to do and began, though the voices around you kept shouting their bad advice. Though the whole house began to tremble and you felt the old tug at your ankles. Meant my life, each voice cried, but you didn't stop. You knew what you had to do, though the wind cried with its stiff fingers at the very foundations, though their melancholy was terrible. There's a back, or there's a second page to it. It was already late enough and a wild night and the road full of fallen branches and stones. But little by little, as you left their voices behind, the stars began to burn through the sheets of clouds. And there was a new voice, which you slowly recognized as your own, that kept you company as you strode deeper and deeper into the world. Determined to do the only thing you could do, determined to save the only life you could save. What is this poem about? I'm not a very poetic person. A very poetic person? But what is it about? So, what's it, so it talks about voices yelling bad advice. talks about saving the only life that you can save. What is it talking about? Um, stuff's going down. Stuff's going down? Okay, but what is the, po what is the person doing? Huh? Is someone else's life? So putting someone else's life in front of theirs. Putting someone else's life in front of theirs. They they could be. So they're stuck in this. It seems like they're stuck in this bad situation, and those voices could be somebody else. You know, trying to hold them back. But what is this person finally doing? If, they're, if something's going down, they're in a bad situation, they're putting others before them. This person has done something at this point. What is she or he doing? If she's driving away, it says, and there was a, through the sheet, let me see. But little by little, as you left their voices behind, the stars began to burn, and there was a new voice, with which you slowly recognized as your own, that you that kept you company as you strode deeper and deeper into the world. What is this person doing? Get out, getting rid of the negative voices or replacing with the positive voice. She's getting rid, of, or he's getting rid of this, right? She's he or she's getting themselves out of the situation. Yes. Yes, she's escaping whatever whatever is holding her back, whatever negative forces or energy or situations that he or she is in. This person is leaving it behind. Now, we're gonna paraphrase it. So one day you finally knew what you had to do and began and began. So one day. You realize one day you realize what you had to do and started doing it. Now, if it says 
one day you finally knew what you had to do. What can we infer about this person? Has this person been in this negative situation? Did they just get into this negative situation? It sounds like they've been in the negative situation for a long time. It sounds like they've been in this situation for a long time. You're right, because you know it's like finally you realized it, you know? Um, all right, so one day you realized what you had to do and started doing it. Um, though the voices around you kept shouting their bad advice. Who are the voices around you that are shouting bad advice? Negative internal thoughts. It could be negative internal thoughts, or it could be others holding you back, right? It could be an individual. Maybe this person is in a relationship that is, you know, negative and, and bad or in a in a situation with others that is bad. Um, so these voices could be internal, external. Um, so others kept giving you bad advice. Though the, though the whole house began to tremble and you felt the old tug at your ankles. Now, The whole house began to tremble. Obviously, we know the house is not trembling. But what does it say? Who, who could be the house and who could be trembling? The person? Why would she or he be trembling? Yeah, they're probably scared, right? Like, if they've been in this situation for a long time, it's probably not an easy thing to get out of, right? Or leave. Um, so, though you were scared, and it says, and your ankles felt the old, and you felt the old tug at your ankles. If they're tugging at your ankles, what are they doing? They're trying to keep you where? Down. They're trying to keep you down. They're trying to keep you in the same place, right? So, though you were scared, and and being held back, I guess would be a good way to reword it. Suppressed her? Yeah. Well, is she depressed, you said? I said maybe being suppressed. Suppressed, yeah. Okay, men my life, each voice cried, but you didn't stop. So, men my life, to men something is to what? Fix. Fix, right? So they're saying, no, fix, fix me, right? Or help me. And this kind of goes back to what Julia was saying, putting others before yourself, right? Um, so, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reward it to take care of me or fix me, other voices said, take care of me. Slash fix me. Other said. But you didn't stop. You knew what you had to do. And then it says, though the wind pried with, with its stiff fingers at the very foundations. What is to pry? Does anybody know? Forcefully open. Forcefully open, right? Um, or, or get to, it, it almost is like an uncomfortable get too close, right? To like be involved where they don't want you involved, right? Um, so... How can we, we re reword that? You knew what you had to do, though the wind pried with its stiff fingers. 
That's a tough one, isn't it? Do we think that they're talking about the wind? Probably not. Who could be crying? Huh? The other people, right? The, the voices that she's talking about. So we could just say, so do you know what you have to do? Others or the other. I keep saying other because we don't know who the other person is, right? Others or if it's more than one. Got, tried to get too close. Though their melancholy was terrible, although their sadness was terrible. See that, or do I need to zoom into my writing? All right, am I going to turn the page? So let's put I see you writing. I'll give you a few seconds. Any wild night, so it was getting late. And the road full of fallen branches and stones. The stars began to burn through the sheets of clouds. Now, if the stars are beginning to burn through the sheets of clouds, that means that the stars are now what? Bright. Bright, visible, right? They were being hidden, um, or, or they were behind this, these dark clouds. So, um, the stars became brighter. And there was a new voice which you slowly recognized as your own. So now as this person is leaving this, these negative energy, situation, people, whatever it is, they're starting to find what? Is it just their voice that they're finding? What are they finding now? Positivity. They're starting to find themselves, yes. So um, the stars became brighter and then you slowly start to find yourself. That kept you company as you strode deeper and deeper into the world. So, let me see how I want to ask this. You're going on this 
this journey by yourself, right? You're leaving this situation that we've already know it was hard to leave, right? Because we know from the one day, one day you finally realize line that this person has been in the situation for a long time. Um, we know from the trembling line that this person was probably afraid to get out of the situation or scared to leave the situation, but they finally left. And now finding themselves, finding their voice is what's keeping them company. So what does that mean? about about them leaving like is it worth it has it been worth it now does this make it worth it does it yeah right it makes it worth they're starting they now it's they're taking care of themselves um so finding yourself makes it worth it makes the journey worth it, right? Determined to do the only thing you could do, determined to save the only life you could save. Um, finding yourself makes the journey worth it as you save the only life can save, which is who? Yourself. yourself. think of the poem? We like it, we don't like it? It's confusing. It's confusing? So, as you know, right, we paraphrase, the next part of our poem is to annotate, but before we start annotating the actual poem, I want to talk about the title. So the title is The Journey. Why is the title important? Through a journey. Now, is it a literal journey? No, right? He's not actually driving somewhere and like, oh look, I'm driving down the road, there's a branch. What is this journey specifically about? Huh? It's an emotional journey. It's a journey where you're finding yourself, you're saving yourself from whatever bad situation this person was in. So before we annotate the actual poem, I wanna annotate the title because the title itself, they're comparing this, this uh, process of self-discovery or this process of saving yourself to a journey, to a, an act, to like a, a drive, right? Uh, but it's not literally a drive down, you know, down the street. So the journey itself, the title, is a metaphor. Which makes the, po the poem a giant metaphor, right? What else can we annotate? I know that we talked about um, about the house and how the house trembling, the house doesn't necessarily tremble. Um, although at first glance, where is it? The whole house began to tremble. That's personification. But we said it's not really the house. The house is representing something else, which we said represents the individual. So what what poetic device would we circle for house? If the house represents something else, like the individual that's trying to leave, what poetic device would we 
would we use? What poetic device uses something to represent something deeper? Symbolism, right? Do we see any similes, any other metaphors, uh, repetition, or words with positive or negative connotation? be negative connotation uh, in the poem. There's very obvious negative connotations. Why would why would there be negative connotation in the poem? It's creating negative feelings, but why would the poet do that? get you to feel to get you to understand and feel what this other person is is feeling right like this other person this is not a happy journey for them as of right now so let's go ahead to the second part and annotate all right so what do we see do we see any personification metaphors similes imagery or any more connotation negative or positive details. What about the road full of fallen branches and stones? What literary or poetic device is this? Imagery. Imagery, right? It's describing.
word determined, determination. Positive or negative? Positive. What about the word same? Positive or negative? burn through the sheets of clouds, what would this be? Imagery. Imagery. It's describing the brightness, right? Or the light now. Now, it is imagery, but it could also be meta almost like a metaphor. Um, she's leaving, she's entering the brightness and she's leaving the what? The darkness, right? These bad times. Like this cloud is finally going away. It could, it could be a literal cloud and a literal stars, or it could not be, right? Um, the other thing that I want to talk to you guys about is called the big butts, all right? So the big butts are, a sh <laughs> when you see a big butt in a poem or a story, there's a shift that happens. Shift, okay, with an F. That means there's a change. In this poem, we have a big butt right here. What is the shift that is happening? Negative to positive. Negative to positive, right? So, now, here's the thing. We had said the road full of fallen branches and stones was imagery, and it could very well be imagery. But also, if we're talking about the journey being actually this process of saving yourself or finding yourself, those branches and stones could be a metaphor for what? In the process of you trying to get away from the situation, branches and stones could be, could be what in reality? Branches and stones on the road. Things to run over. Hazards, things to run over, which means they're what, though? In the process of a self-discovery or saving yourself, they're what? Roadblocks. Roadblocks, challenges that you have to overcome, right, as you're trying to escape, yes? Mm -hmm. So these branches and stones, they could mean that they're challenges, but then the stars began to burn, so there's starting to be some light, and so now the shift is happening, right? The big butt indicates the shift. Yes? Right? We had roadblocks and challenges on the way, but little by little, we now are starting to see the light. There's a shift happening. Does that make sense? So the big butt, when you find the big butt or when you see the big butt, that means that there's shift happening. Shift with an F. Yes? So I'm going to put here shift happen. The big butt indicates that shift is happening. What, Robbie? You guys won't forget the big butts, right? I hope not. That's why I called them that. So those are important, guys, because anytime that you see, like, and it, it's not always but, it's always like, the, um, it could be words like although or though, um, however. So those are also part of the big buts, and they indicate that something's about to change, something's about to shift. All right, so here's what you are doing. You're doing the path, uh, the P, the last P. So. Remember, you need to find the theme, you need to find the tone, and then you
you need to choose poetic devices that show the theme and the tone. So your answer should look like this. Blank, the poetic device. So you can say simile, metaphor, alliteration, uh, imagery, whatever you choose. Contributes to theme because blank. And then you do the same thing for tone. Blank, the poetic device, contributes to tone because blank. You don't have to rewrite the theme here because you're going to find it on the theme house underneath, yes? So if you want, this may be easier. You may want to do the theme house first that way you come up with a theme and then go back and fill out this column. Yes? Does that make sense? Theme house first and then come back and do the, the purpose part. I'm going to give you about 15 minutes to do this. Well, maybe 10. And then we're going to move on to the next part together. Yes? So 10 minutes to do the theme house and then do the, the purpose part, okay? And then don't go further because I'm gonna walk you through the other stuff, okay? All right. All right, so here's what you're doing next with this poem. So we should have done the house, and we should have done the purpose part, yes? I'm not going to walk you through all the assignments that are uh, coming up with this poem because you know how to do most of them, except for one, so I am going to walk you through one of them. Now, the next thing that you're doing is you're answering the question using ache. So it says, what is the central theme of the poem? Well, you've already come up with your theme when you did that little theme house. So you're going to write your answer. You're going to gather some text evidence from the poem to support your answer. Hello. Yes. Um, today it is during third period, but I'm actually leaving the second half of the day. I have, I have a sub in. Yeah, I leave at 12.45. Okay, bye-bye. Alright, so then we have proof, right? So text evidence. And then we explain how the proof supports our answer. And then we're gonna put it all together into an essay into a, a short paragraph here, maybe four sentences. Okay? Three to four sentences, yes? You also have inferencing flowchart. So with the inferencing flowchart, um, you guys have done this before. You have your question, text evidence, you explain your background knowledge, then your answer. Now here's the one that you haven't done before. It's the author's purpose boxes. So I'm gonna walk you through the first one because there's a lot going on here, okay? And I wanna make sure you understand it. So first off, for author's purpose, um, the questions are at the very top. So we see the question here, we see the question here, yes? It says, what is the poet's purpose for using personification in lines 14 to 16? Hello. Okay, I, I have a class right now that's like, you can come back. Okay. All right, what is the poet's purpose for using personification in lines 14 to 16? So your answer is going to be created by using these sentence stems. So, Literally, you're just kind of filling in blanks here. So you're gonna start your answer with the author included. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it with that. The author included. Now, the question is asking about personification. So we have to choose one of these to fit our answer. So the author 
author included? Literary device, short lines, description, sentence, or information? What should we put? What is personification? Which one of these would go in this blank here that comes up? Is personification a literary device? Yeah, it's literary device, poetic devices, personification is a literary device. So the author included the literary device And then again, these little boxes help you write your answer. Most likely two. Now we have to choose a verb. Why did the author include the personification in lines 14 to 16? So I'm gonna go to lines 14 to 16 and it says, and it says, um, Though the wind pried with its stiff fingers at the very foundations. So why would the author include that literary device? We have to choose one of these verbs. Though the wind pried with its stiff fingers at the very foundations. So go ahead and take a look at your literary device and choose one of these verbs to move uh, to including your answer so most likely to blank and then you fill in what the author is trying to say so if you say the author included the literary device most likely to inform or to show then you have to finish it off show what yes i'm going to give you five minutes to answer this question, fill in the blank and then tell me why. So if you say show, okay, what is he showing? And then give me text evidence to support your completed answer. Any questions? All right, who wants to share their answer? The author included the literary device, which is personification, most likely to what? What do we put? What verb did we choose from the side? Peter, what verb did you choose? most likely to inform. All right, so if we look at the line, it says, you know what you had to do, though the wind pried with its stiff fingers. So if it's informing, what is it informing, what is it informing us about? choose show to show. Now when we did our paraphrase we talked about how the wind um, was probably not the wind so we talked about what prime means which means to to come in really close um, and we said it's probably not the wind that they're talking about so what is it showing us what are they trying to show us with that with that line with that personification. Who could the wind be? Who could the wind be? Is the wind really wind? Is that what he's what she's talking about, our poet? Then who would the wind be or what would the wind be? The other people, right? To show and, and it could be the voices, right, that they talk about constantly. To show um, the voices trying to get close. So then you would use text evidence from the poem to support
with this answer. So text evidence would be in quotation marks. So then the next question says, what is the poet's purpose for using imagery in lines 25 to 26? Remember, when you're answering your question, you build your own sentence, uh, you build your an own answer using the sentence stem over here. The author included Literary, the literary device, or you could say the author included imagery, most likely to, you choose a verb and then you explain, and then you use your text evidence to support your answer, yes? So you've got your eight question that you need to do. You've got your author's purpose boxes. So you've got three more questions for author's purpose, and you've got three questions for inferencing. Yes? I'm going to give you the rest of the class time to get that done. If you finish early, then you can finish the, the handout from Wednesday. I know some of you still needed to do that, the study six stuff, okay?